Hi everyone, it's Sue from Artcraft and Journals. Welcome to my craft room today. It is time for my second project for Auntie Vera Scrap and Craft. And what I'm doing today is I'm going to attempt to do a Halloween um, canvas. Um, now I'm not a painter, really, so um, <clears throat> it's not going to be, it's more of a, I guess, a mixed media-y sort of a piece. Um, and we'll see how it works out. What I do have from Auntie Vera Scrap and Craft is I have the two die sets from Sizzix. <clears throat> um, this one is, uh, what's it called? Uh, I don't know. Um, it's just the Halloween one with the lots of creepy sort of things on it. And we have this one. This is the Haunted House one um, by Tim Holtz. So I'm going to use those, and I do have, <coughs> excuse me, um, I do have a 13 by 13 canvas, and it is already black, um, I think it's been gesso black, and I've actually had this in my stash for quite some time, which is why I decided that really it's got to be used. Um, you know, you get all these things and you put them in your stash with the intention of saving it till you find the perfect project. And I don't know about you guys, but the perfect project never seems to come along. <laughs> it really doesn't. And I have so much stuff now that I've decided that I'm just going to start using stuff. If I desperately want another black canvas, I can always go out and buy another black canvas. And look, to be fair, I did get, um, I did get two at the time and I got them on special. So that's kind of a lot of the time what I do. Um, but anyway, um, okay, what else have I got? I have some paints. Now I have some of the Dina Wakely. I've got Evergreen, White, uh, Umber, and I have Lapis. So they're the Dina Wakely ones, which I'm pretty sure are available at Auntie Vera's as well. Um, I do not have a black in that, so I'm just using this uh, Jet Black it says Sullivan's all-purpose acrylic. I'm not sure where this came from, but I'm going to attempt to use that. I also have um, an old tube of Jo Sonia Pearl White paint. Um, this I've had in my stash for, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 years, something like that. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. I do also have this stencil here, which... Um, was from scrapbooking and crafts as well, which I'm going to use. Um, I have some water. I have some sponges, which I'm hoping to use. So, um, oh, yes, that's about it, I think. Well, let's get started, see how I go. Now, because it is black already, um, I think I might just give it a very light coat of black paint. So I'll do that. And then we'll move on from there, I think. Okay, now that's dry, and what I did do, I just sort of skimmed over it so that it gives it just a little bit of texture as well. And to give it some more texture, what I thought I would do is use this stencil to um, just, I guess, break up the plain blackness um, and give it a little bit of texture. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the lapis paint, mix a little bit of black with it so that it's a bit darker. Um, and I'm going to sponge it on to the background just to break it up. Um, and I might actually add a bit of black sort of as well. <clears throat> sort of a little bit of black, a little bit of blue. Um, let's see how that goes. So starting with the black and just sort of going around more the edges, I guess. Now this is only paint, so it's not going to be 
um, hugely textured but you should be I'm hoping that you should be able to see it a little bit um, beyond the um, you know from the actual canvas piece so just sort of trying to blend that blue a little bit with the black so it's not quite as blue so sort of going for that blue bluey black sky um, Okay, let's just have a look. Okay, now, just so it doesn't look too even, we might pop it like so. I'm trying to break up the, the colours a little bit so it's not a definite line and I try not to use the edge of the stencil so that I don't get a very definite edge to the pattern as well. bring it down a little bit more Okay, let's have a look. Hmm, okay, not too bad. I think a little bit more blue here. Um, and then we should be done. Thinking I'm going to um, wash out my stencil, wash my hands while that dries. But that's what it looks like so far. So it's just broken up that plain black background. And I sort of went with these swirlies because, I don't know, I thought um, sort of that ghost swirling sort of, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what it looks like. All right, I'm going to let that dry and I'll be right back. All right, um, now what I'm going to do is this is the cutout of the um, die cut. So that's going to be my focal image. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt <laughs> to paint a moon behind and it on a hill. So I'm just going to sort of um, try and sketch a, a hill. Uh, let me see. Oops, um, extra piece there. Hopefully that's not needed. Uh, let me see, maybe down here. And I might put another hill sort of here as well. Um, now I'm thinking a moon needs to be round. Not too big, but I also want it big enough so that it, um, so that the, it, the house is sort of the haunted house sort of shows. Okay, now hopefully that'll work. Okay, now I'm going to fill in the the moon and the hill. Uh, we'll do the moon first with some white paint because um, I always like to start with the lightest colours, I guess. So just squeeze some paint out. Uh, where is a brush? Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> Always the scary part, I think, the first bit of paint you put on something.
Oh. Okay, it's not as round as I would like, but and canvas is not as easy to paint on as paper either. I'm trying to get into the little grooves on the canvas, not easy. Okay, it's not too bad, not too bad. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger here. Okay, sometimes you've got to stop. Ooh, paint off the brush. Sometimes you've got to stop playing, I find, too, before you get too carried away. Sometimes trying to fix something um, actually causes more trouble. So I'm just going to leave it because... She says as she keeps going, stop. Um, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and smudge the edges a little bit anyway. All right, now the next step is to put some green. Uh, so, uh, do I have another bigger brush? Yes. Alright, <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is dry these and then I will come back and we'll put some texture and things on them.
All right, now what I'm going oops, a bit sticky there. What I'm going to do is on the moon, I'm actually going to use the uh, pearl white paint to. Um, I think I'll just cover it all and we'll see how that goes. Now I know there's not much left in here, so hopefully there'll be enough. What I'm hoping this will do is give it sort of a shimmer um, for that sort of that night, eerie night feel. Brush, the uh, paint is coming off the actual handle. Um, it's my fault I left it. I left them soaking too long. Um, so yeah, <laughs> great. Not the best way to treat your brushes. <laughs> okay. Now. Alright. Um, okay. Just thinking, um, sort of very, very white-ish. So I'm thinking, how can I make it a little bit more darker? So I'm thinking I might add a little tiny bit of black to that, the pearl, and see what happens. So just give it a bit more take the starkness of the white away as I said I'm not really a painter I have done a little bit of folk art in the past um, so I'm not really an expert by any means but I do like to have a bit of a play. Alright, now I'm thinking uh, maybe some clouds in the sky. Just some dark sort of clouds. So, let's have a look. We might put a bit more white. Oops, a bit more she says. Um, and we might put a little bit of black. Some water. See if I can get some sort of washed washed out looking clouds. Uh, oh, here goes. <laughs> Oops. Well, this is kind of annoying, actually. We might just swap brushes, I think. Okay. Now, I didn't want it quite as obvious as that, so... Sort of want soft clouds. I don't know if that's quite working how I expected, but anyway. <laughs> it's kind of just to break up the um, the sky a little bit. a sponge see what I can do with that just sort of to okay uh, I am thinking maybe I should have done something around the actual moon Sort of trying to give it a bit of a like a misty glow sort of in the sky mm, okay <laughs> alrighty oh dear let's see what I can I'm trying to get some more um, cloud sort of across the moon Okay, <laughs> I'm not 
not sure quite how successful I've been with that, but anyway, let's just pop some more water. Sometimes you've got to stop. Might just dry that and see what it looks like. I think. Just see if I can take a little bit of this away. All right, let's dry it and see what happens. All right, I've dried that off a little bit, and I did add a little bit of black in places, just to sort of break it up. Um, I'm not 100% happy with it, but um, look, it's the best I can do. You know, I'm, you know, I'm reasonably happy with it. Okay, now I still want to do something with the moon. Um, and I'm thinking because I'm going to put, when I put the house down, I'm actually going to put a yellow backing so that it has like a light coming through the windows. So I'm thinking I need, I'd like to sort of add a little bit of color to the moon um, and because it's sort of that Halloweeny color I'm actually going to add I've got this uh, carved pumpkin distress oxide spray I'm going to try and add a little bit of that now I've just sprayed it onto my palette and I'm just wondering how I'm going to do this because I don't want it overpowering it I just want a hint of orange so I've got a sponge and I just really don't want a lot, really don't. So I'm just, maybe this would have been a better option, just with a brush, just a light shading. How's that look? Not too bad I think. Just bits, bits over the moon. Just a little bit of a hint of, of, of orange. Oops, that one's a bit stronger. Okay, it's hard to pick that up, I think, in the camera, but just sort of show you, you might just be able to pick it up. Okay, now I'm going to let that dry while I clean up the mess I've made. I will be back. All right, now um, this is dry and I have sat there and spent a little bit of time, quite a long time, um, putting the house together. Now what I did, I did um, back it with a yellowy sort of a color so that you get the look through the windows. Um, and it did take me quite some time. All these tiny little details. When you're cutting it, be really, really careful. You um, catch all the bits in some sort of container because they are so small some of them that it's so easy to to lose in fact I'm pretty sure I lost the hinge part here or brick I'm not sure I think it might be part of a brick um, and I had to sort of replace it so <coughs> <coughs> excuse me be really really careful and you will need um, a fine nozzle glue and tweezers to put all those bits in because they are really quite fiddly. Um, it's not a perfect job. Uh, there's a bit of glue in a few places that shouldn't be. But look, it's not too bad. I'm pretty happy with it. And that's going to sit on the hill like so. Um, not. I want to do something to the moon. Now, what I'm going to try to do, I'm, I'm going to try and give it a little bit of a... Uh, like clouds are passing over it so what I decided rather than try and do it with paint I'm going to try to do it with some distress ink um, so I've got the black soot here and I'm going to put some on here but just before I do I just want to try and have a what I'm trying to achieve is sort of a, a like a washed over just a smudged over um, look so let's see how we go and I'm going to actually push part of the moon up with my fingers if I can 
just so it, it I have more of a raised sort of feel about it. And I'm just sort of using the edge of the, I'm not sure how that's going, but sort of maybe use the edge and just give it a bit of a sort of a smudgy look across the top. Okay, that's not too bad. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. A little bit more. Um, maybe a bit more down here. Although I think that's covered with the house anyway. So, just, yeah, that's not too bad. Okay. Won't get too carried away, but that's what I was thinking anyway. Um, and I might actually just stress the edges. I wonder if that would work. Let's have a look. Just sort of darken those edges a little bit. Yep, I think that kind of works. Okay, all right, so now the next step, just get those out of the way, is I'm going to pop the house down, which goes there. Uh, that's, yep, and I'm going to, um, now I do have some other bits and pieces that I'm going to use. So I've got some little ghosties here from the die cut pack. Just going to place them around and see where I want them. Just distress them a little bit. Now I do have a pumpkin too, which I probably should have stuck together off camera. Okay, let's just have a quick glue here. Trying to go for minimum glue if I can on some of these parts because they're so fine and I don't want too much glue spilling over everywhere. Okay, very fiddly. Okay, now I'm thinking the pumpkin. will be going uh, maybe somewhere down here. Now I do also have a spider web because you can't have a Halloween thing without a spider's web. Uh, you probably can't see it. There we go. Um, now I was thinking up there but it's almost I won't be able to see it up there. Uh, what could I do to make it stand out? A little bit of pearl paint. Mm. Now, of course, I've got rid of all the paint stuff, so let's just pop a bit, just a little bit. Um, now, I'm wondering whether my finger might be the best option. Try to smudge it over so that it gives it a bit, just a bit of a sheen. feeling that there's two little bits that probably should have been poked out there. Maybe not. Nope, not sure about that one. Okay, anyway. So that's what I've done there. Uh, still a little bit difficult to see, but not quite as bad as it was before. Just put a bit more on there. Okay, that's not too bad. Alright, so that'll go there. Now I do have a cat. The cat's interesting. It's got four eyes. I'm not sure if you can see that, but so I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, he can just sit maybe somewhere on the hill. I do have a spider, which I'm thinking um, maybe well, I might sit him in the actual um, what do you call that? The web. Uh, but he does need something. Let me see if I got. Actually, I might glue him down first and then worry about it. Um, hmm. I think it needs some tombstones, actually. 
Yeah, it does. Uh, let me see. I'll need a small brush. And some pearl paint. Oh dear, that was not what I wanted to do. Oh. <laughs> and I think we might add a little bit of black. Oops, should have done this before I um, packed up all the paint. Or washed everything. Okay, tombstone pencil. Can't, can't have a Halloween scene without a gravestone on a hill. And we might have a cross. Yeah, another tombstone. Okay, that should do it. Alright, let's give this a go. Okay, now unfortunately I don't have any water here either. So, I just want a shadow there rather than that. That yeah, will do. Okay. Now they're going to have to dry. And while they're drying, I think I'll glue everything down. Alright, now just a few little finishing touches, I think. Um, I'm going to shade inside the windows just a little bit so that they look like they're, um, I don't know, don't know what the word is. <laughs> just so it's not quite as one dimensional, I guess. So just a little bit of shading just to break that up. Okay, oops, that little cat's head's very loose there. Let me just see if I can a tiny little dollop. Hopefully that'll hold that down. Okay, so I'll bring that up a little bit. You might just, oops, just be able to see where I just did the light shading. And I'm just hoping that sort of makes it look a little, a little bit more, um, three-dimensional I guess. Just a bit more. Okay, that will do I think. Now, the, oh, the spider is not attached to anything. I just remembered that. Um, I might just pop him just there so that he stands out on the moon. And I will draw a web, or a strand of a web. Uh, let me see, black. There we go. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to put some um, markings on the headstones. So just some finishing little touches with the pen gel markers.
<laughs> it's supposed to be um, a person's face and um, I'll leave it. Anyway, okay, uh, let me see what else can I do. I need to do something with those cat eyes. I'm not happy with the four of them. So, let's see if I can cover them with some... I'm not sure if that's going to look any good, but anyway. Um, now, some markings on the spider. Just having a look, what else can I do? probably can't see that through the camera but I've just tried to give it a bit more of an orange tinge and we might just okay. all right um, I'm thinking that's probably it um, yeah I think we'll call that done one last thing I have to put my signature there we go. All right, so I will put some pictures um, at the end of the video as well. But that's my um, Halloween canvas <clears throat> using the Tim Holtz die and the other, the Sizzix um, Halloween dies as well. Okay, so I I'm really happy with it. I will probably pop it on my wall. It's not perfect, but I'm really happy with it. Okay, so thank you very much for joining me. And do remember to check out the blog, uh, go to the website, have a look at what the specials are, because the dyes that I've used um, and the other products that I ordered this month are all on sale, as is the other lady. So great opportunity to get some of the these sort of dyes at a little bit of a reduced price. So um, I hope you enjoyed that video. Give, give something like this a try. Um, as I said, I'm not an expert by any means, but I enjoyed doing it. It was a little bit of fun. And look, it's turned out pretty good. You know, I can put that on my wall and, and I'll be happy to, to say, yeah, I did that. So give it a try. All right. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye for now.